to start. Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne. Uh, this is a series of videos uh, called um, uh, Mentoring in the Heavenly Pla Heavenlies. Uh, it's on a playlist on uh, my YouTube channel if you want to go there and see other interviews with saints. Uh, Tolu, uh, my guest here, she's she's got the name Benjamin there. She hasn't changed it. Uh, so she needs to change it to Tolu. Uh, and uh, she's uh, she lost her husband uh, six months ago uh, to death. And uh, I taught her how to connect with her husband and interact with her husband each day. Uh, she talks to her husband in journals. She talks to Jesus. Uh, I've introduced her to Michael Jackson and her husband's working closely with him. And uh, she uh, talks to Princess Diana. So each day she journals those conversations. Um, and so she's got practice. But she's really enjoying being like a Sid Roth uh, in heaven. Uh, it's like uh, it's uh, supernatural in heaven. Um, when we do these interviews, there, there mightn't be a lot of people who uh, watch them on YouTube because I'm not really a popular YouTuber. But the whole of heaven uh, tunes in and watches these interviews and uh, they learn things uh, from these saints. And uh, so uh, Tulu says that she's got 16 questions for Abel and uh, so it uh, may uh, be pretty comprehensive. I'll just uh, let her uh, introduce herself uh, briefly and then uh, we'll start with the first question. Hello, everyone, and hello to our viewers as well, both on heart and in heaven. My name is Tony Johnson, and I've known Matthew now for about three months plus or four months thereabouts. And obviously, like he did say, I lost my husband and he was able to let me know that it's still possible to still have that communication, especially if your loved ones have gone into heaven. And I've been practicing that and I'm absolutely enjoying it at the moment. And obviously we've been doing a series of videos uh, interviewing people in heaven to have a better understanding of heaven and obviously key characters in the Bible. So today we'll be speaking to Hebel and I hope you viewers enjoy my questions. Thank you. Okay, so question number one. Hello, Hebel. How are you feeling today? I, I, uh, I'm especially... Uh... Uh, humbled uh, to uh, be selected. Uh, there's so many, there's so many uh, people uh, in heaven. Uh, when you consider yourself, uh, you know, I, I get a mention uh, of of a couple of lines in the Bible. Uh, I'm not really a big star in the Bible, and uh, you know, thinking, thinking with my own intellect. You'd think that you could interview a hundred people out of the Bible uh, before you actually got to me, and I was quite surprised, uh, but that the Holy Spirit had uh, directed you to uh, interview me. Um, uh, you'll notice uh, if if you uh, read Matthew's uh, books uh, with uh, his interview with saints, often his first question is. How do you feel about being here today? And um, that's a, like a really good warm up a question for him to uh, get in the spirit and get in the flow. But you'll notice if, if you read a lot of his books and a lot of interviews, a lot of the saints will say they feel uh, really special. They feel really humbled uh, to be given the opportunity uh, to speak. Um, you remember uh, Jesus had the parable of uh, uh, the uh, a guy who uh, uh, talked about Lazarus and, and the rich man going to hell and the, the rich man saying to Lazarus, send message back to my brothers uh, that uh, I'm here, you know, so that they don't come. And Jesus said... Uh, They've got the law, which is Moses' writings, and the prophets. And if they're not convinced by that, neither will they be convinced if someone comes back uh, from the dead. And um, you'd think that was th the end of the matter, uh, and that would never happen. But um, me doing this interview as someone from the dead, 
uh, coming mm. back and speaking, and it's uh, like an example of an exception. And I'm not sure uh, when Jesus uh, spoke that parable or spoke that story, uh, whether he was intending on people from uh, saints from the Bible to speak through Matthew, but this is definitely a contradiction of that story that there's actually people coming back from the dead. So if you've tuned in and you're actually watching this, if you're one of the 10 or 20 people uh, watching this on YouTube, I, I encourage you to uh, stay on and listen to the whole lot. Carefully consider uh, what is said. And um, and uh, there may be a number of things that uh, I say that may be tough or, or hard to reconcile um, I encourage you to ponder them, watch the video uh, more than once and uh, take uh, on board uh, some of the things I say, just like uh, Jesus was speaking to you himself. Thank you, Hebel. Um, my first question, obviously I've asked how you're feeling, but going into the real interview now, I would like to know how was it to, like to be the first family on heart? Well, I, I I just want to say that um, it's recorded that Adam and Eve uh, were the first parents and we're the first family. But you'll notice uh, when uh, Cain murdered him, uh, murdered me, um, a mark was put on him and all the families of the world were told, not to touch him like he had divine protection. And you have to ask yourself, or well, Matthew's asked himself, where did all those families come from? Where did they exist from? If Adam mm -hmm. and Eve were the first parents, where did all those other uh, people come from? And uh, I'll let, just let you uh, ponder on that and think of that mystery. Some things are best left mysteries. Um, you know, uh, a husband could ask his wife, uh, "What what is it uh, that you truly love about me? That what's attracted to uh, me?" And the wife could say, "I'm, I'm just going to keep that to myself." Uh, if the husband pressed that, sometimes finding out the mystery can spoil things. And uh, so, um, so it was uh, in answer to your question. It was good uh, to uh, be descended from God. I could. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we could hear from God, uh, even though uh, my parents were removed from the garden, we could actually hear from God and uh, he could speak to us. He He didn't disappear uh, totally. Um, and um, Eve, Eve was, uh, uh, my mother was, uh, you, you can imagine all the beauty of the world, uh, the, the beautiful... Uh, attractive females of the world. Um, they are all descended from my mother. Hmm. My my mother was, uh, uh, if you could see in a vision, if you could see her, she's tremendously beautiful. Another word uh, that would describe her as stunning. Uh, she would, she'd easily wear the clothes of the best brands and walk the catwalks of this world and uh, be a high uh, stakes fashion model. Um, and uh, I I do uh, take exception and uh, Matthew doesn't know uh, your future questions, but um, I do get really sad uh, about the Christian church. All they can seem to talk about, about my mother is... Uh, that uh, she she took the apple and uh, she took uh, the first fruit and, and sinned. And that's all uh, people have to say about my mother. And I, I want to share with you that my mother was an extraordinary mother and she was beautiful inside and out. And uh, she was extraordinary to me and very loving and caring to me. Mm. Thank you, Hebel. And that was my next question, actually. I wanted to say, what were your parents like? Uh, so, so um, I, I did uh, share with you that uh, my mother was extraordinarily beautiful and 
that's probably because a Matthew's a male and Matthew tends to like pretty women a lot. The world tends to like them. But uh, for all the females out there, um, Adam was ripped. He he was very well toned, had nice muscle, and uh, you could say he was um, he he was like a Keanu Reeves uh, sort of uh, looking dude. He was uh, handsome, uh, well built, strong, and uh, and uh, he um, he had an amazing. Uh, intimacy uh with god it was like i it, it may be funny to hear but even though he was uh formed out of the mud of the clay he was like god's son he is you know jesus was uh the son of god and the firstborn son of god but adam was like god's son and uh and he had like a really intimate and close relationship and uh, when he was given the choice between staying with his uh, helpmate, his wife, and uh, choosing to disobey God, it was a hard uh, choice for him. He only he only did it uh, for his wife and his family. Uh, he didn't mm -hmm. want to uh, desert them. So it was a very hard uh, choice for him. But uh, my dad was a dad of honour and uh great intimacy with uh with god and he was uh tremendously affectionate uh to my mother and um if uh you know if if he had his way he he would have had a hundred children and uh my my mother would be continually pregnant uh he um yeah. he he ravished her uh with uh just you know just capturing his look you know he, he had like romance in his eyes and the way he looked at my mother uh you know if if you're a female and a guy looked at you that way that uh you're attracted to uh you know um some women uh, need a little bit of a warm-up uh before they uh get sexually excited but so sometimes uh, a look from their lover a look from their husband uh, can get them in the mood. And uh, my father always had those uh, bedroom eyes, uh, like uh, Matthew's mother would explain them uh, for my mother. And I often caught him uh, looking at my mother that way. He wasn't embarrassed uh, to look at her. And uh, so they had, um, uh, my parents had tremendous uh, intimacy uh, with God, even after the fall and, and, uh, and tremendous intimacy uh, for each other, and uh, they were on the standards of parents today. When when I look at the earth today, I look at families today. Uh, really high caliber uh, parents, like uh, top class. And uh, and um, Matthew doesn't uh, know uh, your questions, but um, you you could easily uh, uh, put uh, my mother and father. On, on a panel and and ask them interviews at a conference, ask them questions, and uh, they could uh, really disciple people on uh, love between a married couple and how to love your children, how to raise your children, how to honour God. Uh, it would be fascinating. Perhaps, perhaps uh, you can, um, perhaps in the future you can interview Adam and Eve and and uh and they can uh answer those questions for you thank you so much i know you did say something that is very sad today that the world always focuses on what happened between eve and the serpent so how do you want us to change your mindset what do you what have you got to say to the people of the world around that story if you were gonna uh create if you're going to create a new invention, um, if you're going to create a prototype, like a working model of your invention, and just like, uh, let's just say the Apple iPhone, and you created the Apple iPhone, you create the very best that mm. you can. Uh, if if uh, it, th there's nothing that man can create that really has life, but my mum and dad were were 
the originals. And, mm. and you know, um, over time, uh, things break down and get worse and worse. But my, my mother and father were the most handsome and, and, and stunning individuals uh, the world has ever seen. You, you, you know, you walk down the street and you see like a really attractive, I don't know if you do, Tolu, but uh, Matthew walks down the street and sees this like really attractive girl and then you see like a really handsome uh, man holding a hand and maybe a couple of uh, cute children uh, following him behind and you say to yourself, they're really a uh, handsome couple and um, mm -hmm. they, they're they really well suited, they're well matched. And um, my parents were that, they, they, were, they were the originals. Uh, all the thought, all the creativity, all the beauty, uh, in the world's population came from the genetics of of mm -hmm. my parents. And um, you, you can uh, credit, there, there's not one uh, stunning female on earth that can't uh, be credited to uh, the looks of my, my mother. You know, Russian scientists uh, spent time and did a study in genetics and they discovered that uh, rather than the human race coming from multiple uh, gorillas, uh, they uh, the human race descended from just one female, and they discovered genetically that the whole human race came from one female. And the Russian scientists uh, called that female Eve. And uh, mm. so, even in modern science, modern science proves that uh, the creation story is true. And um, my my dad was really wise. Like, um, I take it maybe Elon Musk or maybe Elon Musk, uh, for an example, or, or uh, the creator of Apple. Um, you know, if they're given the opportunity to name every plant and name every animal in the world, very, very few men that exist in this world would have the intellect to name thousands of species of plant and, mm. and thousands of different animals that just the creativity and, and the intellect that would be needed to name everything uh, is, is just, uh, you know, you th contemplate it yourself. Like Matthew's uh, pretty smart, but he couldn't do that. And uh, it's beyond him. And that's what my parents were. They were like supercomputers. They're, they're yeah. really smart. Um, uh, as I said, uh, my mum was extremely attractive and uh, my dad was handsome, well-built and a hard worker. And um, they instilled uh, good uh, morals in us and they instilled uh, good things. You got to remember also that um, there was only one law that Jesus, uh, God gave was, don't eat from the fruit of that tree. And the rest was the conscience, right? So uh, Cain, when when he murdered me, he knew he'd done wrong, but that mm -hmm. came from the conscience. It didn't come from a written law, thou shalt not murder. Moses was thousands of years ahead before the written law or the oral law came. And uh, so, so my parents were uh, really beautiful and uh, Eve is... Uh, well revered and well respected in heaven. Um, it's funny, it's really funny that Christians uh, declare that God is a God of uh, forgiveness and and uh, new beginnings and new life. But uh, mm -hmm. there's no Christian minister that can forget uh, what my mother did, and um, they tend to think that uh, most people tend to think that they wouldn't have been tempted themselves. And yet uh, that that promise, you, you'll become like God. Uh, God doesn't uh, want you to have it because he doesn't want you to be like him. Uh, you know, so many Christians are uh, watching hundreds of YouTube videos and reading lots of books, and they want to have all this wisdom and knowledge. Like uh, wisdom is so attractive to people, and they see that in James. If anyone's lacking wisdom, they should pray and uh, millions of Christians pray that prayer and it's like an elixir. It's like 
uh, 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 the the thirst for um, staying young, like the answer of staying young, the eternal youth. Wisdom is like an elixir like that. It's like a precious commodity. And um, just like my mother, they want to be like God. And um, in many respects, modern mankind does act like God, that, that, that they're their own gods and uh, they uh, discredit and 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 uh, ignore uh, the laws of God, and uh, they do things their way. So m many people can uh, mock my mother and uh, and and judge my money mother and not forgive my mother and but uh, they're just the same. They they're seeking after wisdom and the things of the world, and they want to be boss and they want to be their own gods. Mm. Thank you. That is really, really helpful. And the Bible did note down that you were a keeper of flocks. So what kind of flocks were you keeping or what were you doing? Sheep and cattle. Sheep and cattle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I want to know a little bit more. What was your so relationship? Who did, I'll ask you this. If I was a keeper of sheep and cattle, where did the beef go, and and where did the wool go? Like, surely, a couple of sheep's enough for our own clothing. Why would I have thousand sheep? Who who would use all that wool? Mm, that's another mystery. Yeah. <laughs> I can't answer that surely. But I guess that's another food for thought for me. So I wanted to know more about what was your relationship with Ken, your brother? Uh, he was, uh, he, uh, uh, Matthew's not aware whether he was my older or younger brother, but um, like brothers, there was a bit of sibling rivalry. There was a bit of uh, competition between both of us, but we we're good friends. You know, we, we had a, a uh, close uh, relationship, um, like us, like I shared before, that um, my my mother and father instilled good morals in us, and we loved each other. Um, Cain was uh, very strong, and uh, he had the characteristics of my father: well built and strong. I was more slight; I was more of a mother's boy, uh, timid, and. Um, I, I led with my emotions. Uh, Cain led with strength and uh, 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 brute strength. And, uh, yeah, so uh, so I, me and him uh, got on pretty well. Thank you. You got on pretty well, but what will you see as some of his characteristics? What will his character be? He was... Um, he was a go-to-it guy. He'd set his mind on something and go to it. He'd plan things and execute his plans and go through with it. He's really strong-minded. Uh, he had his ideas and uh, they were hard to argue with. Uh, he would set his mind on something and he'd believe it. And uh, he was hard to talk around. Uh, he, You could almost say he was obstinate. Uh, you couldn't appealed to him. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, knowledge around, uh, you know, when we were born, um, where, where do you get, where do you get knowledge if all you've got is plants and animals and you haven't got mm -hmm. books and you haven't got videos and you haven't got uh, classrooms and you haven't got schools? Um, mm -hmm. Where where do you think uh, we would have uh, collected our knowledge? It was just inherent in our mind and uh, we had to, we're at the very beginnings of developing knowledge. And some of my ideas, my 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 brother Cain totally ignored and what, what was obstinate towards uh, considering. And um, in this life, uh, to to prosper really well, you you got to be open-minded. You don't have to be open-minded that uh, you accept uh, gross sin and gross bad behavior and stuff, but um, you don't have to be open-minded to uh, uh, 
have perverse sexual activity and all sorts of things like people's idea of the word open-minded is is a bit distorted these days but you got to be teachable and have an open mind and be open to things and my my brother was more closed-minded and more obstinate about the things uh he was tough he was uh he was uh a person of order and rules and regulation you could say that um if you understand the term he was very rules based very legalistic and uh i was more like creative spirit and more uh, in the flow of the feminine uh, side of life and he was more in touch with the masculine Thank you. Thank you so much. There's been so many noise around this sacrifice that was written down in the Bible. I wanted to know, was that your first sacrifice or have you been making sacrifice to God prior to that? And what made this particular one special? Um, can I just speak for my brother? Because I really love Cain. Um, yeah. Cain is in heaven. And like like my mother, uh, he's got a bad reputation, and mm -hmm. um, people still judge him today, even in heaven. And uh, uh, no no one told us that uh, without the shedding of blood, uh, it's not a proper sacrifice. Like um, mm -hmm. I think uh, it was meant to our own spiritual intellect uh, to work that out ourselves that uh, it has to be a costly sacrifice um uh Cain dealt a lot with crops he he had uh animals but he's a very uh successful uh crop grower and uh produce producer and uh he's very successful at that and he he brought uh uh, in the Jewish tradition, in in the history of Israel, uh, there was a sacrifice called the first fruits, where you you bought uh, the first parts of your crops or your produce, and you gave it to God. And uh, Cain's uh, sacrifice was more of like a first fruits offering. It was like his best wheat and his best grain and his best uh, thing. And he 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 he. he 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 was very humble and he, he was very um meaningful. He, he he had no real idea that he had to kill a lamb or uh shed blood and he would have done that. He he was like uh innocent in that and um and uh uh it's sort of uh Satan Satan uh, and I mentioned him would would have you believe that God wasn't fair. Uh, you know, if you uh, do some thinking into that, like it was unfair that uh, God uh, wanted a blood sacrifice when Cain uh, dealt more with fruits and vegetables and, and crops. And uh, it's just like someone who trades uh, in carpets and, and sells carpets and mats and stuff uh, if God asks for a sacrifice, they might bring a really nice carpet. They, they, they're not uh, conversant that they've got to go and trade one of the carpets for a lamb and sacrifice the lamb. Or if uh, you're a car dealer, you, you might bring one of your cars for God. Um, and uh, so Cain was just bringing um, the best of what he had. And, uh, you could look at that and say, well, then God is unfair. That was unfair of God. And um, that's always uh, when when that happens and that question comes up, it's always Satan behind that thought uh, because mm -hmm. uh, Satan's objective is to make you think that your life is unfair or God is unfair. And um, so it was there in a conscious sort of way uh, just like I, I said before that Cain was very rigid and, and stuck to his ways and obstinate and wasn't open to new thought. And this new thought uh, from the Holy Spirit or from God's Spirit uh, coming to him that you, you need to bring an animal here, he shut down that thought on the way to the sacrifice. He said, 
no, my crops are enough. This is the best of my crops. So he did get offered that thought, but he rejected it. Like I said, he was obstinate. Uh, but I, I love my, I dearly love my brother. And, uh, and uh, I, I don't, uh, e even, uh, I, I, I listen to what uh, humans say. And you, you may be surprised when, Pastors around the world are pre preach on certain saints. You may be surprised that the saints are in the congregation listening to the testimony of what pastors say about them. And um, if if you're a person who's a teacher and you teach on the word of God, be aware that the very uh, saints that you're speaking about uh, may be in your congregation listening. And um, Matthew knows that because he's met Peter on multiple occasions when people have been preaching on Peter and people don't have good things to say about Peter and uh, people tend to not have good things to say about Eve or Cain. So mm -hmm. I loved him and it was a big deal to God. It was natural to me because I was a keeper of uh, of lambs and, 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 and uh, cattle and uh, livestock. Uh, so it was natural of me to bring the first fruits of my crop which was animals um mm. but um it wasn't natural to Cain but he was uh, suggested uh but like I said he he was uh obstinate and it's hard to change his mind mm. thank you Abel going back to that time how do you know that yours was accepted and Kingston wasn't accepted was God speaking to you directly yeah, God was speaking to both of us, yeah. Okay, okay, and that's how you knew. Mm -hmm. And when Cain knew his was not accepted, obviously he was angry with God, and that anger was taken on you. So will you trace Cain's anger back to being obstinate as well? Why was he angry? Uh, yeah, he's obstinate. Uh, remember, uh, remember, you, you know the testimony that God was speaking to us because Remember it said that Satan is crouching at your door. Um, yeah. God said that to him and he heard that. And um, so he was warned that there was thing, but God knew uh, there was going to be trouble in paradise. And mm. uh, he he had forewarning and that's why he warned Cain that Satan's uh, standing at your door. And, um, uh, and really... Uh, I was like the first fruits offering of a human sacrifice um, uh, to God. So I sacrificed a good lamb and then Cain sacrificed me. Uh, it's like Cain said, you want blood? I'll give you blood. That's powerful. That is so powerful. Never thought of it that way, but that's another perspective you brought in, Abel. So you were the sacrifice. And how did you feel about your life being cut short? Well, I spent a long time in, in paradise uh, under the earth and um, I was ministered to by angels and uh, then I ascended to heaven after the resurrection of Jesus and I've been loved in heaven and I've been busy in heaven doing things. And uh, I've never, never not forgiven my brother. I've loved my brother. And uh, in heaven, I was able to watch what my brother accomplished and went on and uh, did some great and awesome things that I'm proud of. And I dearly love my brother. My um, Matthew was uh, picked on uh, by his brother uh, for in his early life and brother used to uh, have play fights with him and then uh, Matthew would get a good hit in and then his brother would get angry and really hit him and abuse him and had an abusive dad. But even though his brother was violent to him, he always revered his brother and respected his brother. And the same is uh, true of me, even though my brother was obstinate and hard to talk to. Uh, and and eventually killed me, I've always loved him and respected him and revered him. That's beautiful to know. And how does Cain feel about that? Yeah, he's uh, he's very happy. He's uh, 
he went on to have great success on the earth and was very successful as a trader and uh, well accomplished and became a very wealthy and that's why God had to uh, put that warning out. No one's to touch Cain because he had a great potential. Mm, thank you. We look at it the other way around. Uh, maybe God said don't. no one should touch Cain so that he can pay for the price of what he did. So the reason is because God really loved him and he knew he had a lot of potentials to achieve on her. Yeah, they were, ch they were children of God. We, we were the children of God. We were... The grandsons of God, if Adam and Eve were God's progeny, like God's female and male sons, like uh, God's firstborn son, we were like the grandkids, and uh, mm. God had a lot of love for us. Mm. Thank you. When and we and at... I, I want to add to this, um, if you've done bad things, yeah, mm. I know Matthew's uh, been addicted uh, to prostitutes for 39 years, and pornography and he's done some bad things he's never murdered uh, but um and i don't think he knows if he's been responsible uh, for an abortion but you could have uh, been responsible for an abortion or you could have killed someone or you've done something extraordinary uh, violent or something really bad something really evil god still loves you you know that's why uh, jesus died on the cross to forgive sins and uh, your sins are forgiven. And uh, there's so many uh, people that exist that are going through life uh, with this uh, big cloud over them, this big burden over them. They're such a sinner and God would never love him. God loved Cain even more so after he killed me. Um, yeah. God was a supporter of, of uh, Cain and <coughs> helped him. Uh, have the insight and intellect to establish his wealth and uh, prosper. Thank you so much. So as the people of the world today, what can we learn from your story of Abel and Cain, the offering, and Cain's reaction to God not accepting the offering, the hunger? What can we pick from your story? Because obviously... Well, this this exists... This exists in the world. Uh, so many people in the world uh, are angry and selfish and, and uh, envious and jealous of people with wealth, people who have something that they don't have. There's, there's so many uh, evil, jealous, uh, bad sort of people who are poor people, who despise the rich and... Um, it's surprising that uh, that there's there's so much jealousy, and I, I don't I, I don't think that people truly r recognize how jealous they are. Matthew Matthew's never jealous, you know. Mm. He he's happy for people. Uh, if someone's got a fortune, like money, money doesn't mean anything to Matthew. But if someone's got a fortune, he's happy for them. But there's so many people ordinary people in this world that really hate the rich and hate the successful and despise them. And um, that's just like Cain despising my offering. Uh, you know, I had a blessing. I, I was blessed by God and accepted by God. And some people I feel because they haven't prospered and they haven't been blessed and they haven't seen success that God doesn't love them or doesn't accept them. And, um, that's not the case, you know. There's poor people in the Bible. There's there's the widow uh, in the temple that gave her one coin and the Pharisee uh, put in a big offering and Jesus said the widow gave more and she's more celebrated in heaven uh, than the Pharisee because uh, she gave everything that she had and, 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 and he gave out of his abundance. Uh, so as a poor person in this world, uh, if you give half of what you have or all of what you have, you've given more than all the rich people in the world. You've you've given everything. And it's all comparable. You know, if if you're a person on a low income and you're still giving uh, God 20% of your income, it's worth more than someone who's wealthy 
uh, giving 20% of their income. It's all proportionate. And uh, so there's so much jealousy and envy in the world. Um, Matthew tries his best as as he uh, uh, demonstrates the Christian life and walks under an open heaven and interacts with saints and angels and has like a successful uh, Christian life. He tries his very best not to um, boast or not to make people feel less than him. And he'd like to think that he could mentor anyone and teach anyone uh, to come to his level because he believes that everyone can uh, walk at that level. But uh, so he does his best, but rich people don't go out of their way to educate poor people. Uh, they don't go out of their way to show poor people how to uh, uh, do wealth, but many of them uh, do seminars and books. So many of them have a lot of care for the ordinary person and write uh, really uh, books full of key insights how to develop wealth. So there's a lot of uh, wealthy people who've got like a calling to to educate the average person, but um, wealth is developing wealth is is a real skill and a real talent and a real gifting. And um, I, I'd say uh, the lesson out of uh, our life is uh, make sure that um, what you give to God, the offering that you give to God. And the life that you give to God is something worthy, something meaningful, something important. Um, uh, I, I don't believe you haven't. Uh, Matthew doesn't believe, and I don't believe. I don't believe anyone can be so poor that they can't give to God. I, I think uh, God's a universe is is set up in such a way that everyone can give twenty percent of their income, and even poor people can do that. Um, but uh, uh, there's so many lessons that can be learned. A lot of people uh, look at the story of Cain and Abel and it doesn't apply to them. They they don't think it applies to them. But uh, I, that's the reason why the majority of people keep on buying things. And um, continue buying newer and newer things and because they're comparing themselves to other people and trying to find their acceptance in the clothes they wear and the cars they drive and the houses they are. And they're constantly in competition, comparing themselves with other people. And um, you can be in the stage in life where uh, possessions aren't important to you and uh, showing off and being important in front of other people isn't important to you and uh that your your chief asset your chief possession is that uh, you're close to jesus and jesus is your personal friend and god is your personal friend and uh cain regretted uh, what he did he lived with uh he lived with that regret and god spoke to him and god sort of uh his relationship with god uh, really improved and he, he tuned into God and uh, he um, really uh, had God's favor on his life and God prospered him and uh, he became like a really uh, beautiful father of nations and uh, he uh, he it was a real success story of course that's not in the bible all you hear about is uh, the jealousy of 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 Cain and uh, him murdering me but I was a sacrifice and uh and you know there's so many people uh and we're going um there's there's so many innocent blood uh sacrifice in the world satan is is still after blood and uh there, there's so many ritualistic uh sacrifices that ha happen as people try and uh assume more power and gain more power and uh, there's, it's in uh, witchcraft, it's in Hollywood, uh, it's in the elite circles and stuff. There's uh, a lot of innocent uh, blood uh, being spilt in the name of power. And uh, But I, I want to speak to the ordinary person. I want to say to you that you need to take envy and selfishness out of your life. Um, and uh, you want to uh, stop running after the things of the world if 
if uh, you've been following these interviews that we've been doing, it's a co common theme. You need to learn how to give 20 to 30% of your income to God. And uh, if you don't know who to uh, give it to, uh, which is often the main reason why people don't give, uh, you can send the money to Matthew and uh, and Matthew can disperse it and send you the receipts of where he's sending it so you can learn uh, where to give it. Uh, but um, a lot of people say, well, that's not me. That's a story that's like me. Uh, like David uh, seeing uh, Bathsheba uh, bath on a wall. He was just looking out his window. He's allowed to do that in his palace. He, he was looking out his window and he sees like an extremely gorgeous uh, girl naked uh, having a bath. And uh, a lot of men would like to think that dad turn away and, and they wouldn't uh, look at her. But 95% of men wouldn't turn away and they'd look as much as they can. And men uh, men who had the authority that could summon that woman and rape her, they'd do it. Many men would do that if they had the power. But they like to look at that story that's not me, but, you know, over 70% of men view porn and masturbate to porn and they're doing the same thing, having visual sex with with a female against her will um and uh so many people look at bible stories and say that's not relatable that's that's not me but every single one of you have uh done things in jealousy and and taken actions out of jealousy and envy and uh, envy and jealousy is very dear and if if you weren't the sort of person who, uh, who, if you're a person that was happy with what you had and weren't constantly trying to impress people, you'd be able to give 20 to 30% of your income to God and spend it on God and his kingdom rather than spending it on yourself. But it's your own uh, desire to be loved and your own desire to be someone important that has you wasting all your money on yourself. Thank you, Abel. So for those watching and they're thinking, I'm already giving 20 to 30% of my money. What else can they give to God? Uh, from they, they, can, uh, they can give you time. So one of the best things uh, besides money uh, to give to God is uh, to, to give to God something that you're good at right so if if you've got um a, a really a good ability to uh, see errors uh in, in in people's writings you can pick up typos and mistakes you could join a christian writers group and offer the writers in there to run through their manuscript just before they print uh to see if the editors and the, and the proofreaders uh, found every error. If you're really good at that and you can always spot errors, you can offer that time as a free resource to someone and use that like a tithing, that's like a giving to God. That would really help a Christian writer. If uh, you're a person who who's a tax agent and uh, you do people's taxes and you charge $200 an hour, uh, for your time, you can write to certain ministries in your state or in your city and say, um, my firm charges me out at $200 an hour. I can offer you uh, to do your taxes this year as an offering to God. And rather than uh, paying $1,000 uh, in tithes, um, extra tithes above your 20 or 30%, you can give an extra tithe of your time of something that you're experiencing and you can spend five hours of your time and give someone a thousand dollars worth of value and not only support that Christian ministry and save them a thousand dollars, but even give them suggestions and give them uh, keys to... <coughs> keys to them saving more on tax. And uh, you can even uh, write them a bill and give them a receipt for $1,000. Uh, you could 
not do anything dishonest, but you can say uh, five hours of your time, $200 an hour, $1,000. And um, whatever you choose to do, and uh, so many people are gifted in so many ways, and you can offer your talent as a tithe. Um, you know, someone can be uh, working at a bakery, can be a baker, and uh, they can uh, invest $200 of their money buying the raw materials and baking the bread for a homeless hostel. Every morning, the homeless hostel serve fresh bread uh, with their breakfast or with their lunch, and $2,000 worth of bread, but it only costs $200 uh, to the baker who's spent three hours and his time in his uh, ovens uh, cooking the bread at a cheaper price. And there's, there's just so many ways that you can... Uh, transform your ability uh to to tithe so it, for instance with you you're, you you can develop websites and uh, you can uh, do it you can offer those services and skills that you have uh, to christian ministries and uh, develop a website or consult a, a christian ministry and you can do that uh, for 50 percent off or 20 percent of the price um uh, and uh, you can add tremendous value to a ministry that just simply can't afford it. And you can bet the ministries that take you up on the offer really need that help. Uh, so there's just so many things that you can do. And many people can't see that that's a way of giving. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, But uh, uh, people, there's so many verses in the Bible that, People know the verse, but they don't know how to do the verse, like bless your enemies. Uh, and uh, uh, they they don't know how to practically bless their enemies. Uh, so sometimes people need descriptions. So depending on what you do, what you're good at, uh, find a way of doing that skill for free for other people uh, and blessing them. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. So you, you would be, instead of giving uh, 20 to 30% of your income, instead of uh, giving like uh, $400 or $500 a month to God, you could uh, spend $500 a month on the raw produce as a baker and bake $4,000 worth of bread. Instead of giving $400, you could be giving $4,000 worth of value. Um, and if that was... If that was added up, that'd be eighty percent of your income. Uh, uh, so uh, you can do more with a talent than you can do with finances. Mm, multiplication. Yeah. Thank you, Abel. Um, I also wanted to ask for people that might be watching this later on and they're struggling. Well, so, so for Mary, for instance, I know Mary's reading this, and Mary likes to read. One one of the yeah. chief ways Mary uh, can uh, give to God is to read people's books and uh, write reviews on Amazon. It doesn't it costs her for the book and time to read the book, but when she reads a good book and she goes uh, through her Kindle connection, for her to remember every book and go on to those books and write reviews, and it takes time and it takes effort. But that's a way, Mary, that you could really sow to God. And I know uh, there's great reward in heaven uh, for the reviews that you wrote of Matthew's books, but you can do that uh, for all sorts of authors. And you can start to choose uh, books now with it in mind. You're going to write a really good review and you can keep in touch with authors who are just about to release a book and you can write one of their first reviews and have that review on the first page and really sell their book and you write uh, really good reviews. So if you're uh, a person listening to this video and you like reading books, uh, that's a way that you can really bless uh, writers and you can bless readers by writing good reviews. And if you're a person who uh, watches a lot of videos, you can really bless the viewers of videos writing a good uh, uh, comment on a video uh, that can teach and uh, encourage the other listeners to the video. And many uh, people uh, recording videos actually read their comments and you can really uh, bless 
the person, if they're a small person with not a lot of subscribers, you can really uh, uh, bless uh, the maker of video. I know Kevin Zadai is really popular, but he reads every one of reviews, uh, comments, and there's a little uh, thing on uh, on on YouTube which is like a little heart, and when he's read your comment, he presses that heart to say he's read your comment. So uh, if you, you uh, followed someone like Kevin Zadai and watched his sermon has got a lot out of it, you can write a real blessing as a comment uh, to him, and you can be sure that he'll read it. And he, I, <clears throat> Matthew did one for him <clears throat> and asked for prayer. And Kevin Zadai commented on the comment and said, I'll be praying. Um, so uh, be aware that, uh, that if you put your mind to it, you can bless a lot of people. Thank you. Thinking out of the box. To yeah. Bless people. Because I wouldn't think writing a review is a way of blessing another person. So it means there's so many ways that doesn't need to cost us money that we could still bless other you can, people. You can visit a website and really like the website and find it really practical. You can write to their contact us email address and spell mm -hmm. out the five reasons you thought their website was really good. That'll really bless them. If you've got a a suggestion, uh, have have a, a, a more extensive Q&A on your website. Here are some questions you could answer and, and uh, write three questions that they could answer for you that would add more. Whatever your skill is, you can add value to other people. Thank you. That's, that's very good to know. I wanted to ask for viewers that might be watching this later on that are struggling with one sin or addiction in their life how can you encourage them to let them know that god still loves them and they can be delivered from those okay challenges? so i'm gonna uh have a break i'll be about a minute uh and we'll come back and uh i'll have matthew thinking about uh, that as we go i'll be okay. back in a minute okay So here I am back. Uh, so this is Abel again. Um, Matthew was uh, going to his uh, gas station uh, to get some milk early in the morning. And Bob Jones was a uh, former prophet on earth, was being like a mentor to him. And he, um, he sensed Bob Jones. Bob Jones said hello. And before Matthew said hello back to him, he thought of his recent uh, sins with por uh, pornography and uh, sleeping with prostitutes. And he thought about that and had the thought say to Bob, I'm not worthy of you talking. And oftentimes when you sin, your sin puts separation between you and God, especially until you've repented and restored your peace. And Bob said to him, Matthew, your sins don't define you. You you think you're committing pornography. You think you're sleeping with a prostitute. You think that's all of heaven sees. He said, but your character is what we look like. You're a beautiful person. You're encouragement. You encourage her. You're a prophesier. You're a kind person. You're compassionate. You're honest. 
you're loving, you're understanding, you're a teacher, you build people up, you um, bless people. And he listed about 20 things. He said, that's how heaven looks at you. Heaven doesn't look at your sin. Your sin is forgiven by Jesus on the cross. And all you have to do is repent and you're restored uh, to relationship. But honestly, heaven doesn't see your sin. Heaven doesn't concentrate on your sin. When they think of you, they're not thinking of that prostitute addicted person. They're thinking of those 20 qualities I'm talking about. So one of the first steps is when when you're sin conscious, there's a thing called sin conscious. When when you're a sinner and you're always committing a sin, that's always on your mind. It's on the top of your mind how you can't give up this addiction. But one thing that you have to do, and Matthew found in his life, before you're ever going to find lasting freedom, I mean lasting freedom, you've got to change your theology. Matthew had... 100 people or 200 people write to him uh, their first prophecy. In four books, he teaches people how to prophesy, and then he gets them to do their first prophecy over him. And he had 200 people write to him, and in the prophecy, it says Jesus really loves you. And 100 of the prophecy says Jesus is really proud of you. Matthew didn't believe that. Matthew didn't believe that Jesus would love him and be proud of him until he'd given up the sin. Matthew's mm. theology had to change, and he found it in some of the writers on grace, uh, on hyper-grace teaching. He, he, you have to come to a stage where you understand that God loves you for who you are. It's not what you do. It's not what you do from now on that makes God love you, that he loves you. And you, you can compare it uh, if you're a child. You know, a serial killer can be on death row and his mother coming in once a week to visit him. She loves him despite his sin. She just loves him. And that's how God loves you. And that's how Jesus loves you. He doesn't love you except the fact you're a sinner. He doesn't hold distance between you and himself because you're sinning. And until you come to realize that God accepts you within your sin while you're participating in that sin and when you're not participating and God loves you the same, he actually loves you more when you're sinning because he's got compassion on that part. And uh, so the first thing you need to do is uh, do research and uh, change your theology to the point where you accept that God loves you regardless of what you're doing. Because if you always think that God doesn't love you when you're sinning, you're never going to get free of the sin. And you can uh, go to deliverance and uh, you can uh, get inner healing. And there are things I suggest uh, you uh, have counseling and inner healing. There's root issues and there's trauma and wounds that are, exist in certain people's lives that uh, give them the compulsion to put on that Band-Aid to like cope with uh, that pain. And the Band-Aid could be alcohol or drugs or a sex addict. Um, so uh, in one instance, you've got to deal and have that trauma fixed. Another instance, you may uh, go to someone in deliverance to remove a spirit of lust. and um, But uh, you're not going to have lasting freedom until you've changed your theology, until you understand the fact that uh, God loves the masturbating man that you are. And Thank you. until you can say God loves me as a masturbating man or an adulterous man, until you can say that, it's not going to uh, really uh, come off you. And Matthew got free of his addictions uh, for seven months and then fell back into it. But he doesn't go around beating himself up. He's got a tremendous uh, relationship uh, with God and it's growing stronger and stronger. And um, there's people who are masturbating tonight who, who are going to die and going to end up in Jesus' arms later in the mm. night uh, when they have a heart attack and uh, not every not every uh, human being on earth 
is going to be free of their addiction um, before they go to heaven. And um, while if you stay with a heart, a humble heart, a heart, a contrite heart, while if you've got a heart of contrition that's honestly sorry for your sin, uh, that uh, you can be in that state, that addictive state, until the day you die and still be accepted. But don't miss out on the intimacy. Draw close to God. You, you know, David was dearly beloved of God even after he'd uh, had adultery and uh, murdered uh, Bathsheba's wife. He's still dearly loved, beloved of God and still God's favourite king. And uh, And... So people got those bad things to say about David. And it's not the only bad thing David did, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's not all mentioned in the Bible, some of the things that David did. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, so God sees your good qualities and focus on your good qualities. And I, I know uh, shame and rejection and condemnation will weigh you down, but uh, you, you, uh, 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 Matthew's got a book called Your Identity in Christ. I really encourage you to read those truths of the Bible. Thank you, Hebel. This response really, really blesses my heart because I could see that as Christians today, we struggle with a lot of theology that separates us from God. And from what you've just said now, it's good to know that God loves us the way we are and we should continually build that intimacy with God. How do you feel the Bible calling you a righteous man? As is written in Hebrew, it, you were one of the examples of faith that you brought the right offering. That was an action of faith. So how do you feel? Uh, you know, everyone mentions... Uh, in Hebrews 11 or 12, wherever that is, I think it's Hebrews 11. Oh, in that, 11, four, 11 verse 4, that is yeah, Abel. In the faith chapter, yeah. Uh, everyone mm -hmm. mentioned in that Hall of Fame is really happy. Uh, there's mm -hmm. there's uh, that uh, Bible verse that actually frames in heaven with names and, and photographs of uh, the saints and it's called the Hebrews 11 wall and all those saints are in this uh, building in heaven. Um, but uh, in uh, Matthew's book, Your Identity in Christ, and Matthew wrote that book about uh, 19 uh, uh, statements of faith uh, out of uh, the Bible that are true of Christians. Um, and he wrote it while he's addicted to pornography and, uh, if if you uh, read the book, you'll find Matthew struggling with accepting what the Bible says about him. And in the Bible, in, in your identity in Christ, in some of the scripture passages, it says you are righteous, you are holy, you are perfect. And when you're stuck in sin, addictive sin, you don't believe that you're holy. You don't believe that you're righteous and you don't believe that you're perfect. But the Bible says that about everyone and everyone who's lived a life as a Christian could be in Hebrews 11 and could be mentioned in Hebrews 11. Um, to be honest with you, the way that Matthew knows God, God could just rave on and write a book about you, about how good you are and write about all your mighty exploits and everything you did. He could write stories about uh, your sin and what you did and what you did to that girl and how you had sex with that prostitute. And then the three things that you said that she never forgot, that you really encouraged her and uh, how you learned from that sin and went on and, and did a mighty exploit. So God, God, uh, if, if you've got the ability, you develop the ability to speak to God. Uh, he, he can say some, uh, wonderful things about you. So I mentioned there, and uh, Paul, who wrote Hebrews, was just uh, thinking up a number of people to mention uh, who who are examples of faith. But you know, all I all I was said there was that uh, all all I, I just brought a good offering. Well, uh, Israelites, yeah, I wanted. What's okay, that? Go on. 
I wanted to read it for you. It says, it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Yeah. Uh, for, for thousands of years, Israelites brought acceptable offerings to God. And mm -hmm. it was part of the law. And I, I just, what what I was saying, I'm, I'm not diminishing the fact that I was mentioned by Paul as uh, as someone who acted in faith and brought an act, acceptable sacrifice. I did that. What I'm saying is there's been millions of people that have brought acceptable sacrifices. You know, every time you give $5 to a homeless person, you do as good as me. You you give an acceptable sacrifice. Every time, every time you give uh, money to a homeless person and they say, thank you, God bless you, you've given a sacrifice as good as mine. And um, every time you take uh, half an hour to teach a person how to speak to God, Matthew, I did that today. He wasn't really in the mood to do it, but he did it for this woman. That was tremendous to God. God thought that was just so amazing. This woman has been trying for years to speak to God and she finally was mentored into it. And it was just an effort for Matthew. Matthew didn't want to go through the process, um, but he did it. And that's an acceptable sacrifice to God. Every time you offer your time or you offer your resource or offer your advice or offer something to another person, sometimes against you, well, sometimes when it's hard for you, God really sees that. And he really, you know, sometimes Mary, uh, when uh, you uh, watch one of Matthew's videos and you write a couple of paragraphs of feedback, and 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 you mentioned key things in the video and and you really touch Matthew's heart. It really touches Matthew's heart, but it also touches other readers and um and uh, there's so many things uh, there's so many uh people that uh you've uh, given money to you have uh, people help you take things out to your car because you got a sore back and you give them five and ten dollars and you've blessed so many hundreds of people. And Matthew has said to you uh, before uh, that uh, you're a real weapon and uh, Satan uh, doesn't like you going out of your house. And uh, that's why he'd prefer you homebound and not going out of your house, because every time you go out, the Holy Spirit moves on you and you're a blessing. Or just like Mary, uh, I'm talking to Mary for other listeners, is a friend of Matthew's in Toulouse. Just like Mary, you can go out and be a blessing. When, when you see a need, address that need. When someone approaches you with directions, take them to the place, direct them to the place. Um, if anyone has a need, address that need. You'll never run out of money. You'll never run out of resource. Mm. And, and 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 always be open to help. And it's a change of attitude. You've got to you've got to discipline yourself not to be so selfish and not to be so onto yourself and not to uh, have the world. Uh, universe uh rotate around you you've got to stop being the king of your own universe and start looking out to uh change needs if you're watching this video uh, you can go through the process and take the time uh to join youtube and do what they need to do matthew did it so many years ago he doesn't remember but uh, you can go the process type into google how do you uh, start a YouTube account and you can do that and then every video of Matthews and every video that you watch from now on you can write a comment you can go out of your way and join YouTube so you can write uh, comments and start to encourage whole lots of people and uh, you can uh, get people's uh, contact details and PayPal address and start to send people that you watch on YouTube donations and support the ministries. Um, but it all takes, uh, doing all these extraordinary things uh, comes 
from a state of getting over yourself and stop being so selfish. You can you can spend your 20 or 30 percent donations just donating to YouTube channels and donating and supporting uh, people on YouTube channels. And uh, you don't have to pay YouTube premium $13 a month so that they don't play you ads. You can accept the ads and let the ads fully play on YouTube so they can earn their money. And you can start to send YouTube uh, providers finances. You can keep $50 uh, in, in your purse or in your wallet. And every time you see a homeless people, you can get $10, $5 notes and give $5 notes. Change your ways. Get over yourself. Stop being so selfish and uh, go and uh, transform the world. Uh, just, But just know scripture, if you're a Christian, uh, says that you have the righteousness of Christ. Uh, you may not believe that, but start to be that. Start to manifest that righteousness in any way that you can. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Abel. That was really, really good again. I wanted to just briefly ask you, how has been your experience of being in heaven? Because you've been in heaven for a long, long time now. Well, I was under the earth uh, in paradise up until uh, Jesus' uh, resurrection. But um, I've I've had a good time in heaven. Um, I've uh, just like Abraham uh, uh, was he had his name changed from Abraham to Abraham, and uh, Matthew thinks the name Abraham uh, meaning was father of nations. He thinks that's the case. Um, in heaven, I've become like a spiritual father of everyone. Uh, that comes to heaven. Um, people who uh, grew up uh, with the Bible certainly know who I am, but uh, surprising to some people uh, here listening, uh, if this is the first video of um, heavenly uh, interviews, uh, if this is the first one you've heard, surprisingly, there's people of other faiths in heaven and some people of other faiths have not heard the biblical account of Cain killing Abel, but I'm introduced to people as one of the first humans, and uh, I've got a presence. I've got a, like a strong glory. I've done a lot of uh, things in heaven for people. I've I've given a lot of myself. I've mentored a lot of people. Um, I've been very consistent in obeying the Holy Spirit, and I've done everything the Holy Spirit has asked me. I've really ascended. Uh, to a high place in heaven, but even though I'm in one of the highest realms in heaven in authority and I've got this uh, tremendous glory, um, I'm really a father to everyone in heaven and like a spiritual father. And uh, I've got um, I've got an intellect like uh, Jesus. Uh, I've got a mind like Jesus. I can actually, uh, uh, this is news to Matthew hearing this, but um, I can actually speak to thousands of people at once in heaven, and um, I've been given some of uh, Jesus's ability. I've got um, tremendous wisdom and insight. I've I've got an answer to everyone's question. Uh, I've got all the answers, and um, so uh, God uh, really uses me uh, to minister. Are you there? Yes, I am. God, My God really is uses. God really uses me to minister to a lot of people. And I've ministered, uh, and it may be hard to capture, but I've ministered one-on-one -on -one with millions of people. And, um, mm. you know, uh, you can call me like a counsellor, a healer, a therapist, a life coach, a mentor, a spiritual father, uh, all of those roles. And um, if uh, if... You, you could uh, sit down and uh, ask me all sorts of questions about life and the Bible and Bible verses. I'd be able to extensively uh, go into answers and stuff. And um, Matthew was shocked when uh, you told him before the interview that you had 16 questions. He wondered how you, you could get 16 questions out of just someone who gets a few lines in the Bible. And uh, now he knows that you're talking to one of the most uh, wisest and 
uh, people full of insight in heaven. I've personally ministered with me and uh, are very popular in heaven. Uh, I've got tremendous authority in heaven. I've got tremendous power. Uh, but uh, Jesus said on, on, on earth, some of, some of the things... Uh, Matthew might have to do a, a series of videos. Perhaps you can do a series of videos with Matthew to encourage him uh, to to go through the Gospels and get every line that Jesus said and have uh, Matthew expand what that actually means. But Jesus mm -hmm. said that he, he that wants to become the greatest should be servant of all. And uh, so there's a lot of uh, modern day so-called apostles, uh, some real apostles, but many uh, men call themselves apostles and aren't. But there's many so-called apostles that build networks uh, who have uh, uh, thousands of spiritual children and charge them all $50 or $100 a month or $1,000 a month to be their spiritual father. And they give them insight and encouragement, but it's just like one pyramid scheme of earning money and it's not really about mentoring people well i'm that spiritual father i'm someone who's uh, mentored and encouraged millions of people um they can uh put me on the, uh someone can put me on a stage and we can have a stadium of uh, fifty thousand people uh, listening uh, to the answers and uh my answers the questions and the answers are being played to means of people in heaven uh, on their iPads and stuff. So um, the people win, win awards and win competitions in heaven to get into the stadium to actually be live there. And it's like second place to watch it live on your iPad. But uh, if you're really important, you win the competition to get in there. Uh, you can be in the stadium and I'll spend two hours uh meeting and greeting people and taking selfies and the two hours will be like two weeks worth of time so the hundred thousand people in the stadium will get to meet and greet me and ask me a question take a selfie but um the, the interview is uh is streamed to everyone in heaven on their ipads everyone listens and i'm like um the ultimate source of uh information uh in heaven and uh, i can uh, the means of people listening, I can talk to those uh, means of people in, in my mind back and forth. And I've become almost like God himself. And uh, just like uh, Jesus said, anyone who wants to become the greatest must be a servant of all. Because of my servanthood over the thousands of years, I've just been continually winning competitions and being promoted and giving more and more power more and more authority and more and more skill set and uh, there's very few people in uh, heaven that can talk to a million people at once and um, people uh, treat me like their own personal Jesus and I'm like uh, a messiah and a leader of many people but you can see from the way I say this thing there's there's not one ounce of pride or uh, being puffed up or or thinking that I'm greater than anyone Anyone can enter heaven and serve as many people as I have and give their life to as many people as I have and uh, be promoted to the stage I am. But there's not really many people who would want to spend their time speaking to a million people at once. Most people couldn't be bothered about anyone else. So there's people that will listen to this video and will willingly walk past the next homeless person and just ignore them and pretend to themselves they should have a job. That's their problem. I'm not going to give them money. And uh, there's people who who uh, will continue after this video going on and living a selfish life. Um, uh, you know, I can be wise, but uh, Jesus said wisdom is found in its children. And... Uh, and um, so it's the, your progeny. It's it's what comes from your wisdom that proves that that's wisdom. You can come out uh, with a really uh, good uh, cliche. You can come out with a really good meme on Facebook, a really good saying, but it's only powerful if a lot of people put that into practice. You know, wisdom is proven by children. So in other words, many people can mock 
uh, Donald Trump and have a bad opinion of Donald Trump. And Donald is very egotistical and uh, some would say a narcissist. Um, and uh, But his children are extraordinary children. And, and they're top class children. And if you want to mock Trump, you can look at his children and say, well, he did something right. The, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So um, when you've got a lot of wisdom, it's proven by result. It, it really is true wisdom if it's uh, proven by result. So there's a cliche, there's a saying that says if uh, you say a lie often enough, it becomes the truth to people. And um, sadly, the meanings of most of the scriptures in the Bible have been lied. They're lies, they're mistranslations and misinterpretations. And the misinterpretations are believed as the truth. And the actual wisdom and the truth of most scriptures isn't known to people. And uh, perhaps uh, you can be motivated uh, to do a series with Matthew uh, going through each of the Gospels and each of the things Jesus said and do a series of videos on that. Um, but um, yeah. that's probably a surprise for you. It was a surprise to Matthew. And um, as uh, as one of uh, the wisest uh, people and most powerful people in the universe, I want to tell you, Mary, that you just, you, you just aren't a total stranger that started reading Matthew's books and uh, got convinced that you wanted to contact Matthew. I uh, just like Tulu uh, just seemed to have picked me out of a whole lot of random people in the Bible that she felt led uh, to pick me. She had no idea picking me that she, she pretty much picked the apple of God's eye and, uh, and one of the most important people that will ever be interviewed. Uh, she had no idea, and perhaps uh, she'll uh, make another 20 questions and ask them. But just like that, like Tulu come across my name uh, with, with just the Holy Spirit's leading, uh, you were led, Mary, to chase up Matthew and become his friend. You had no idea that uh, you have no idea that you're one of the most special people in the universe to God and uh, and. Uh, the fact that I, I, I keep on uh, being led to say things to you, Mary, means that you're that important. I'm a person of importance. And uh, I uh, I get very emotional thinking to you because um, God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and all the saints in heaven want to be your friend. You, you're a delightful uh, person. And... Uh, there's so many uh, people in heaven that have got so much heartache and uh, deep things and hard things to talk about, and they want to talk to you. Thank you, Hebel. And I think my final question today is for, for people that will be watching this video, I want you to encourage them to let them believe this, that it's not a lie. It's actually coming from heaven because obviously we're so much damaged by this worldly theology that a lot of people don't believe that this is real. So it's recorded in Matthew that uh, when Jesus resurrected, that a whole lot of saints came up from their tombs and uh, went into Jerusalem and presented themselves. Well, they weren't ghosts. They were real bodies, just like Jesus resurrected in a real body. And uh, Matthew has uh, met other saints, but they've been like a spirit in a flesh body, which is a real human. Uh, Matthew has met uh, Jesus in a flesh body five times, and it's been a flesh body from heaven. Well, those saints uh, that came up from the tomb were flesh bodies, and um, people met them, and that's in the Bible. And so it's true that saints that have died can reappear on earth and interact with earth and um I just encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit uh, for books and videos and music and ads on TV. Uh, I, I just pray, uh, Holy Spirit, open up the airwaves and open up your spirit uh, to the people watching this that are a little sceptical and uh, 
allow them to open their hearts uh, for confirmation and Holy Spirit go before these people in all mediums of communication and prove to them and confirm to them that uh, they really heard the truth. We only want to honor the truth and the truth is found in Jesus. But Jesus is only the doorway. Jesus didn't say he was the answer. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, everyone comes through Jesus, even people from other faiths come through the the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus. Um, but uh, Jesus said he is a door. He didn't say he was the destination. And uh, Jesus is a doorway to truth. And, uh, and um, so many uh, truths can be uh, found in the things that Jesus said, but so many truths can be found in things that other people say. And uh, and uh, so you need the Holy Spirit uh, to give you confirmation uh, that uh, what was said today was the truth. Now, you don't have to believe that I can speak to a million people. You don't have to believe that I'm one of uh, the most powerful people in heaven. You don't have to believe that I uh, have counseled millions of people in heaven. You can suspend your belief on certain things, just like you don't believe everything that's written in the Bible. You may say you do, but you doubt certain things, and it's okay to have doubts. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not a bad thing to have doubts. It's actually a good thing. It's just like uh, being judgmental, be, being a judge of things, it's, it's, isn't a bad thing, you know. You you need to judge between one thing and another. You you only find the best Thai restaurant by going to twenty Thai restaurants and comparing them and judging the nineteen against the one that's the best Thai restaurant. Matthew was told a pub that he hotel he was in the other day cooks the best Thai green curry that you'll you'll ever eat. Well, that's all Matthew ever has. And Thai food is Thai green curry. So he can bet next time he goes back to that hotel with his carer, he'll be getting that Thai green curry because he wants to see if it really is the best. Um, so um, it's okay to judge and doubt things, and that's what makes you a, a, a smart individual and one with intellect. And I may have said some things that I don't agree with your theology. They don't agree with what you've been taught before. And that's okay. You didn't believe that Jesus loved you. Many of you uh, masturbating the porn don't believe that God really loves you and really accepts you and is really proud of you. He's just as proud of you when when you're, you're having an orgasm to uh, a female having sex on video. Jesus loves you just as much as you're doing that as when you're praying to him. Actually, he, he loves you sometimes more when you're doing that because you're being yourself. And uh, so uh, you may not believe that Jesus loves you. You may not believe that Jesus prayer. It doesn't change the fact. So Jesus is very self-contained and I'm very uh, sure of myself. And we know what we believe and we know what the truth is. But if you've got doctrines and insights that are disagreeing with some things I say, suspend your judgment. Do some more research into what I say and prove for yourself that that's the truth. If you blindly accept everything that was said here, well, you could be a fool. Mm. Uh, so uh, it, Matthew only believes uh, what is being said because he's so used to bringing voices that are saying about he's... Uh, He's wondered for years whether anyone else could speak to a million people at once. Was Jesus the only one? And now he's starting to see that that's like an ascended gift in heaven and you can get promoted into that gift. Not everyone can do it, but he wondered whether it was possible and now he knows it is. And now he's wondering who are the other saints that can do that because that's something he'd love to do. He'd love to minister to the whole of heaven and... Uh, he knows that when he does these interviews, he's uh, ministering to the whole of heaven, but the whole of heaven can't be asking him questions back and forth. Uh, and uh, so he, he's seen something that he really likes, which is new to him. And I hope uh, some things are new to you. Just understand that 
Uh, my brother Kane has uh, become a remarkable person in heaven. And Kane is like a hero in heaven. And we all need a bad guy in the stories. You know, there's not many um, dramas on TV. There's not many stories that haven't got a villain. And Kane took a good role. He was a good villain, and he's played the role of a good villain for thousands of years. And um, for for me to say he's my hero, and I. I adore him and I love him. Uh, Maybe new to you, but it's a fascinating story that I could forgive the brother that killed me. But what about all the uh, Jews and Arabs, Jews and Philistines that meet each other in heaven? They've got to forgive each other. And, you know, the guy that comes and picks on you and punches you in the head and has a fight with you, you're often best friends with him because he's a very good fighter and you respect that. So many good friendships start with warfare or something bad. And um, Cain, my brother, has played a good villain for thousands of years. It's time for you to change your opinion. So I just want to close with this to Lou. Uh, that uh, you've got so much ahead of you. There's so much of of the Bible uh, that you can research. Huh? You can sit down uh, with the Word of God and uh, and look through uh, multiple scriptures and uh, have uh, questions about multiple scriptures and uh, do your research and write down a hundred questions and we can have uh, five long interviews with with all the answers to questions. And you can make me somewhat of a hero on uh, your video broadcast. It'll certainly be interesting. Um, I uh, I I admire your courage. I admire your tenacity. Uh, I admire your faithfulness. I admire the fact that you give Matthew days off uh, when he's not feeling the peace. Uh, I I admire your persistence. Your your contentiousness. Uh, with uh, you contentious and you contend for the truth. Uh, you battle and labor over certain verses until you hear the truth on it. Um, you're open. You've got a lot of hope. You've got a lot of love for people. Uh, you'd really love to love millions of people, uh, but uh, you've got little time uh, for people who aren't real and aren't genuine and aren't honest, and there's so few of them in the world. It's going to change in heaven. You'll love every person in heaven. By the time uh, you get to heaven, uh, your your husband will be one of the biggest heroes of heaven. Uh, by the time you make it to heaven, you will have made yourself a hero of yourself. The whole of heaven knows your name. The whole of heaven uh, loves your questions. Uh, so many people in heaven want to be interviewed by you um, and uh, they, they rely on the Holy Spirit uh, that the Holy Spirit will give you the right questions to ask. Uh, we enjoy talking to you. We enjoy seeing you. You're so uh, beautiful uh, to us. Uh, you've got a, um, it says in scripture that God admires someone who's got a humble and contrite uh, spirit, and you've got a humble and contrite spirit. Uh, it also says in scripture that uh, God loves the brokenhearted and he's close to the brokenhearted, and you certainly qualify there. Um, heaven is really proud to hear that you say that you're happy your husband died and if you had your choice over again, you choose for that to happen again. You've uh, really come a long way. Um, look at uh, how you've come in six months and try and project where you'll be in six years. And uh, there's so many people, um, you know, you've proven that someone gets a couple of lines in the Bible and you can have a really long interview with someone. So you know that you can go through the Bible and uh, pick names. And as long as you can come up with the questions, uh, then uh, you can have a good interview. I, I'm really uh, encouraged by you. I really love you. Uh, I, I encourage you to uh, put me on your daily journal and start uh, dialoguing with me and asking me questions and coming to the understanding that I really am the, probably the wisest person in the universe uh, besides Jesus and God and uh, test me and ask me personal questions, things that have plagued you uh, for years and uh, get my clear and concise answers and uh, test my relationship with you. Um, you uh, do us proud. Uh, you're a real hero. 
uh, you you um, got a greater reputation in heaven than Sidroff has on earth. And uh, when Sidroff gets to heaven, uh, perhaps he'll be selected to be interviewed by you, but it won't be the other way around. Thank you. Thank you. And and uh, and to Mary, uh, I just want to say that um, it's going to be a practice of uh, every saint to speak about you. Um, Having uh, the wisest person uh, in the universe uh, besides Jesus and and uh, not even Mary Magdalene can speak to a million people. And uh, uh, to have uh, the wisest person in the universe uh, besides Jesus and God uh, wanting to speak to you, consistently bring up your name, consistently uh, talking to you means that uh, you're a really special person. Uh, you could uh, you could uh, be best described as a kingmaker. Uh, your your uh, relationship uh, with any person uh, would make them a better female. Would make them a better man. And not only have you been used to assist Matthew uh, to become uh, who he is and write the books that he has. Uh, you're going to be extensively used to build Tulu into uh, the person that she needs to be. There's there's keys and there's keys and insights and scriptures and encouragements and things that you need to say to these two individuals uh, to take them to a further place. And you're just like um, children have. Uh, slot cars and they race slot cars and they go through this uh, charging station and when they go through it it accelerates the car at a higher speed and you like one of those charging stations for Tulu and Matthew they debrief with you they talk to you they discuss things with you and you, you make them really good uh, you know Matthew looks forward to uh, your re reviews on YouTube of what you write, and uh, he looks forward to the conversation, uh, talking about the interview. He's uh, really blessed, and I'm sure uh, Tolu is really blessed uh, that uh, you listen to the interview and give them extensive feedback. Um, and uh, you really, uh, the people of heaven, uh, just like June, Matthew's mother, if everyone in heaven uh, wants to talk to you, uh, some of the greatest uh, saints in the Bible want to become your dear and personal friend, uh, just like uh, Matthew's mother made Matthew and fashioned Matthew into who he is today. Uh, so you have become like a mother figure, like a friend to Matthew, the most important female in Matthew's life. And you've really fashioned him into something extraordinary. And there's so many saints in heaven that want to go to another level and simply have got questions and they need feedback and they need key insights. And you really act like a life coach. You listen, you give advice. You, you don't often give advice. You don't often uh, direct path you to do things, but he really listens to everything you have to say and um, God bless you and uh, keep you. I hope uh, that uh, my words touch you. Uh, you've uh, you've uh, you've really experienced a whole gamut of life, and uh, you, you uh, certainly have uh, things that you can complain about, but uh, you don't complain. And um, Satan uh, is scared of you, and uh, and uh, you, you touch people's lives and. Surely goodness and mercy is going to follow you for the rest of your days. Okay, so see you, Tulu. It was great uh, talking to people. People, uh, if uh, you start commenting on Matthew's uh, videos and uh, start making yourself known to Matthew and Tulu, uh, there's a good chance that one of the saints might actually say something to you too. Um, so I want to encourage you. If you liked uh, this uh, video, please like it. Uh, if if you want to go through the process and join YouTube, uh, you could uh, become a close friend of Matthew and and Tolu and uh, really encourage them with your comments. Um, I encourage you to share this video with other people. Uh, if this is the first video you've seen of Matthew, uh, 
please be encouraged to subscribe to his channel and watch more. You can see uh, more of videos like this uh, in the playlist on Matthew's YouTube channel called Mentoring in the Heavenlies. God bless you and keep you. Uh, amen.